Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Lexus RCF. And as is the usual case, nature's way of saying to me is providing me with crappy conditions when I'm in a gas guzzling car. So you may recall the waterfall from the Cadillac ATS-V review and that waterfall is now completely frozen. I also found this thing. Um, yeah. But I will prevail, so we're going to be talking about five reasons why the Lexus RCF is amazing, because it is, uh, but unfortunately I'm not going to be driving very aggressively uh, if I want to keep my job and not end up in a ditch. Now I'm going to get things started subjectively, so reason number one is going to be the looks and the styling. Now plenty of people in the comments are going to say that this is uglier than anything that's ever come out of Saturn, but Saturn doesn't exist anymore, so who really cares? I'm in no way gifted at artful speech, so let me just say, look at these amazing shapes and these shapes, and look, more good shapes. Wow, Lexus, great shapes. I also think it looks just as good on the inside as it does on the outside. You know what else looks amazing? This jacket. My parents got it for me for Christmas. Thanks, guys. Now, number two, I want to talk about technology because Lexus has done some cool things with this car. One of the things they've done with the engine is that it not only has direct injection, but it also has port injection. And the benefit of this is, is that you get the benefits of direct injection, but direct injection engines often have carbon buildup on the intake valves because they don't have any fuel spraying on them. And so by using uh, port injection along with direct injection, they can help keep the intake valves clean, leading to longer uh, longevity and better reliability but still having the benefits of direct injection. Another thing they've done is that all of the glass in this vehicle is infrared ray reducing. And so if this vehicle is sitting out in a hot summer parking lot, uh, not as much heat is going to be passing through the windshield. Uh, and that's pretty cool because you can get in your car and it won't be as hot. Uh, or, you know, or it's a bit more efficient if you're driving around in a hot city. So that's another benefit. Uh, and that's kind of cool that they've incorporated that within the glass. I was at uh, SEMA this year and they had some similar technology that 3M was releasing that would block uh, UV and infrared rays uh, to help keep out heat. And and I thought that was pretty cool that they've incorporated something similar within this vehicle. Another neat feature about the engine is that it can switch between the Atkinson cycle and the auto cycle. So most of the time it'll just be in the auto cycle so you can get power when you want it. But let's say you're cruising on the highway and you don't really need any power, it'll switch over to the Atkinson cycle, which is more efficient, and so you can get better fuel economy. And I get it, half of you guys don't care about fuel economy, and you're real men, and you cut down trees with axes, blah, blah, blah. But you're those same people that always share those memes about how your fuel tank is always empty and you don't have any money to fill it up. You're not fooling me, the Atkinson cycle is cool. And the final piece of tech that's pretty cool is you actually have a physical button to raise and lower the rear wing. Now, number three, I'd like to talk about the interior noise levels and the sound system. And, you know, you're not going to really believe me that it's really quiet in here because you can hear all these rocks kicking up in the wheel wells, but it actually is a phenomenally quiet vehicle uh, when there aren't tons of rocks in the road. And so paired with that, it has probably the best sound system of any of the vehicles. My girlfriend and I actually have this kind of running thing where whenever uh, I have a vehicle and I'll be like, hey, the really good sound system in the whatever, and she'll be like, yeah, but is it Lexus good? Because truthfully, these Mark Levinson audio systems are just extraordinary. Now, one of the vehicles that I think also had a really good sound system was the Escalade, but I think it focused a bit much on the lower end, on the lower frequencies, rather than the higher frequencies. And that's what this Lexus excels at, is those higher frequencies. I think the best way to describe it, because obviously you can't just listen to it, you'd have to be in the car to actually hear it, um, is that it, it does a very nice job of splitting up the frequencies. And so you have this rich bass uh, that sounds, you know, it's alone, and then you have that middle range frequencies, uh, which they come from their own source, and then you have these high range frequencies, and they come from their own source. And they don't kind of mesh together uh, like they do in most sound systems where it's kind of just this like blur of sound that comes out at you. This does a really nice job of splitting up all of the different frequencies and you hear them all very clearly. And it's amazing how it does it. And that's the best way I can describe it. But truthfully, it's just one of the best sound systems I've ever heard. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it has 17 speakers and it has an 835 watt amp. Now, number four, I want to talk about the rear differential. Now, the car I'm driving in has a Torsen limited slip differential, and that's a nice differential for putting down power, but you can option up to a torque vectoring differential. And the big benefit of the torque vectoring differential is how it behaves in the corners. 
So with a torsion limited slip differential, you're going to be sending more torque to the wheel that's rotating slower. That is always the case. You will always send more torque to the wheel rotating slower. So when you're going around a corner, uh, the only scenario in which you can send more torque to the outside wheel is if the inside wheel has less grip and it starts to slip and spin because the inside wheel is going to be rotating slower. So in the majority of cases, you're always going to be sending more torque to the inside wheel. Now with a torque vectoring differential, you can change that up and now you can have the outside wheel spinning faster and you can send more torque to it. And so the benefit of this is, is you can help the car rotate in a corner. And so as you're powering out of a corner, you can send more torque to the outside wheel, rather the inside wheel. You won't have slip and you'll be able to rotate the car. And so that's a really cool way of aiding how the car behaves in a corner just by using the differential. And if you'd like an explanation of how those work, the torsion or the torque vectoring differential or the Atkinson cycle, I'll have videos linked in the video description. Now, number five stands for five liters. Under the hood is a naturally aspirated five liter V8 engine producing 467 horsepower, 389 pound feet of torque. So if I blip it down into first gear, you can hear that engine, sounds phenomenal. It really comes alive over 4,000 RPM and it revs past 7,000 RPM. So you've got plenty of engine, uh, plenty of RPM to work through. So, you know, it's working with an eight speed automatic transmission, which isn't the greatest, but the engine sounds phenomenal. Now, one of the things about the engine sound is that I believe there is a speaker in here that's playing some artificial noise for you. Uh, so just forget that I said that and you'll just think that this thing sounds wonderful. But the engine is really nice. You've got a great throttle response and you've got good torque uh, above about 3000 RPM and beyond. I mean, it seems to have really nice torque delivery. Uh, so no complaints with the engine. It's a lot of fun and it provides quite a bit of power. Now, one thing I have noticed driving this in these poor conditions versus driving the Cadillac ATS-V in poor conditions is that this seems to be a bit more friendly uh, and a bit more confidence inspiring than the Cadillac. The Cadillac really wants to step out the rear, uh, even if you're going in a straight line when you put your foot down versus this tends to kind of keep it more controlled and keep you straight uh, when you do put your foot down. And the traction control seems to do a little bit better of a job. I also think it may be a difference between the differentials uh, and how the Cadillac used an electronic diff to lock up, uh, which may have been reactive versus this is a torque sensing differential. Uh, so it's pretty much always active. It's not going to you know, wait for slip to occur. It automatically sends torque if one wheel starts to slip to the wheel that isn't spinning. So in these conditions, I have found it easier to drive this Lexus a bit harder than I drove the Cadillac without it getting all over the place as far as the back end. Okay, so I'm going to get a 0 to 60 in. This car does not have launch control, but I've got the rear wing up, so I've got loads of downforce. Conditions aren't great as it's pretty cold outside and I've got summer tires, but I'm just going to floor it and see what happens. Let it do all the work. Uh, let it settle the traction control and all that. So traction control is on. I've got it in sport mode and foot down. A little bit of spin. Actually does a really nice job. And there's 60. Does a really nice job with the traction control, uh, basically maximizing the amount of grip you have uh, and giving you the best optimal acceleration. That was actually pretty impressive uh, considering how cold it was. I had a really hard time in the Cadillac ATS. Uh, the traction control was basically worthless and it would just spin. This just did a pretty nice job. Uh, didn't let it spin much, and so pretty decent time probably. It's not as quick as the Cadillac ATS-V in uh, excellent conditions, but uh, that's not what I'm provided. So not, uh, not too bad. Pretty impressed with the acceleration there. Now, is the Lexus RCF the best performing vehicle in its class? Absolutely not. It's a super heavy vehicle, weighs about 4,000 pounds, and the transmission is fairly slow to shift. And those are some serious drawbacks. It's not gonna be as quick as the Cadillac ATS-V or the BMW M4, which uh, take out a little bit of the weight, and they have better transmissions. That said, this vehicle is amazing in its own right, and we should all be happy that Lexus makes a car like this. So thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Come on, is the whole road just covered in rocks?